<laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to start by apologising to Andrew for completely changing the name of the talk. And basically, it's the same, it's the same talk. Um, and I'm here to talk to you about one of the uh, the two hardest problems in computer science. And uh, since since I'm, I'm I'm not Paul McKenney, it's it's not question validation; it's naming things. Um, so um, th th this all got started because. Um, I, I was trying to write a, a document about um, what is the radix tree, um, and um, we, 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 we've gone back and forth, what exactly is the Linux radix tree, and we, we can't really find anything in the computer science literature um, which um, is actually what the Linux radix tree is. Um, I've seen it called a Patricia tree, it's not a Patricia tree, I've seen it called, it's, it's not a tree at all, um, it's, it's, it's a try, um, because trees only store uh, keys. Um, they, 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 don't, they don't store the, the values associated with the keys, they only, so they only store whether or not a key is actually in the tree. And e even that, um, what, what, what exactly is a key in a tree? I mean, um, I, I was thinking, is, 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 is it this? It, it turns out sycamore seeds are called tree, are called keys. And so, that's the, so it's the, this whole thing is based on a pun. That's a great way to name software. <clears throat> Um, so I, I was also looking around in, inside the kernel and saying, well, why, why aren't more people using the radix tree? The radix tree is a, is a great data structure. It lets us store um, uh, 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 pointers, and we have lots of places inside the kernel that store pointers. Um, and, 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 and instead of people using the radix tree, which, which, which is great and awesome, I see people implementing their own resizing arrays. And, and, and you know how people are when they implement their own abstract data types. Um, everyone does it badly. Um, and, and, and you say, well, okay, well, let, 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 let's just use it. Everyone should use it. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of an evangelist. I come to talk conferences and I try and persuade people to do things. I'm like, well, okay, so in, instead of persuading people to convert their own code, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go off and do it for them. I discovered it was really hard, really, really, really hard. If, if you've got someone who's already implemented a resizing array and you try and convert it over to using the Radix tree, it's awful. It sucks. It's, this, is a, this is an interface which is hard to use. I would encourage you to um, read these URLs. Um, I'll, I'll put the slides up somewhere so you can you can find them. Um, read, read read these two blog entries by Rusty. Um, they're, they're they're really good and they talk about you know really how not to write kernel APIs. It, it's not. It, it, it doesn't rank way down at the bottom with the, uh, the, uh, the this interface is actively harmful. If you try to use it, you will die kind of interfaces that, that do exist inside the, or did exist mostly inside the kernel. Um, it just doesn't fit how people want to use it. Um, and part of the problem is, is um, you, you go all the way back in, in the uh, literature, which, which I did. I, I went back and read these old editions of Knuth and, and, and um, various different other authors. Um, yeah, the, the earliest paper I could find on on uh, ra the radix uh, on tree data structures uh, was from 1968. And adding something to the radix tree, to, to any kind of tree has always been called insert. It's not store. It's it's not it's not any any other synonym. It's always been called insert. And I think insert leads us down the wrong path for thinking about uh, tree uh, for, for, for thinking about how how this kind of thing should work because language is really powerful and and, and when 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 you, the, how you name something really influences how people think about it um, and I've got a great example of this which I've got to put in my slides so I'm just going to talk about it right now which is that um, the radix tree doesn't ju just store pointers it also stores something called exceptional entries which sounds really really intimidating. Um, so the X-Array doesn't call it that. It's the exact same data structure, by the way, between the X-Array and, and, and the Radix tree. The, ra the X-Array does not have exceptional entries. It has value entries. You can store a value directly in it, or you can store a pointer. So you can store an, an integer between zero and long max, or you can store a pointer. And it, 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 just, it just works. And I think a lot more people are going to want to store values than want to store exceptional entries. It's obviously, when something's exceptional, we, like, that, that, that's kind of scary. Um, yeah, so I've, I've been waffling about that. Maybe you've been reading the slide over, over it, uh, over my shoulder while I've been talking about that. But um, yeah, uh, Coleman, License and Rivers um, is, 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 is a great book on abstract data types. I, I use it all through university, uh, which and they, they've put out a couple of new editions of it since I was at university. But um, it's, it's still a really good book. Um, and uh, they, 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 they literally have an exercise for the reader where uh, you, you try and adapt their algorithm to store values in, the in, 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 their, in their trees as, as well as the, uh, the, the, the key itself. 
Um, and so it's always fun to try and debug um, the, uh, the, the, the code of such luminaries in the field as Corman, Lysenson, and Rivers. Um, uh, yeah, but they've actually got a, well, it's, it's not a bug, right? They're, it's just underspecified code, right? Nobody actually ever said, well, what happens if you try to store the same key twice? Um, they store two copies of it, which is interesting. You say, well, does it exist? Yes, okay, delete it. And you say, well, does it exist? Yes, it still exists because you only deleted one copy of it. Um, the Linux registry doesn't let you try and store a key twice. It says, oh, there's already something, there's already something here. Like, well, does that make sense? Oh, if you're talking about inserting into a tree, you can say, well, yeah, that, that, that kind of does make sense. There's already something here I don't want to write over the top of it. And then you start to ask other questions about how, how should this work? Well, what, what, does it, what does it mean to say, um, what is the value of a key when there's been no key stored in the tree? And then it says that's null. And OK, that, that, that makes an awful lot of sense. But conceptually, I'm going to look in the key, I'm going to look in the tree, I'm going to find a key, or well, I don't find a key. Well, what value is associated with no key being present? Oh, OK, well, we, we, we've, we've got pointers. So yeah, null makes a certain amount of sense, but it's, um, it's odd. And, and, then you, and then you can talk about, well, OK, so if, if null is what we get back from a key that's not present, what if we want to associate the value null with a key which is present? Well, how does the user then tell the difference? And what, what, what does it mean to store a null as, as the value of a key? And, and is that the same thing as deleting a key? From the, it's, it's actually really, really hard to think about trees. So here, here, here's my approach. I'm keeping the radix tree data structure. The radix tree data structure is great. There are, there are very few problems with it. There are some, I probably won't get to talk about them today because I don't have enough time. Um, but change the metaphor. Let's talk about this in terms of an array. Now, it's, it's, it's an abstract array. Um, we're, we're not going to implement a resizing array because resizing arrays suck. Um, but the radix tree data structure is great. We're keeping that. But we're going to pretend that it's a resizing array. Um, we're going to do some other things. We're going to provide locking by default. Right now, the radix tree does not, it says, oh yeah, the user can do its own locking. Great. That, that just makes it harder to use. Uh, we're going to provide locking by default. Um, because pe pe people, and I've been through a lot of the places in the Linux kernel that use the radix tree right now, it's awful, uh, mo mo most of them are awful in some way or another. Um, it has some other quirks in the API, like it, you, you, you can preload memory. So this is something, if you're not a kernel programmer, you won't, you won't know much about this. But when, when, when you try in, this, in the Linux kernel to allocate memory, you say, um, here, here, you basically tell the memory allocator, these are the actions you can take in order to free memory if you don't have any free memory right now. Um, one of them is, is, is uh, sleep and, and wait for the problem to go away. Um, but if you're holding a lock, then you can't sleep. So you have to, uh, you, you say, well, you know, you, there, there are some actions you just can't, can't do. Um, and so the, the memory preloading um, says, well, I've, I haven't taken any locks yet, but I'm going to. So um, you, you, you can pre-allocate pre some memory in case I need to uh, allocate memory later in order to store this, this key in the tree. Um, and then it, it go, and, and, and then it can act, the, the, the radix tree gets to access this special private cache of memory. But what it actually ends up doing is tying up um, 12 kilobytes of memory per CPU um, that's never used because <laughs> the radix tree does its absolute best to not use <laughs> the memory that's preloaded. It, it goes off and tries to, it will only access this memory as a fallback if it absolutely has to. This is just, this is just a nightmare. Um, but, um, yeah, so, so, so the concept of the radix tree, um, sorry, the concept of the X-ray is that it's this resizing array. Um, you know, you described it. It's an array of pointers indexed by an unsigned long. Everyone can understand this. this, 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 this you know, if, 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 if you are competent to write code, you, you, you understand this. Um, Thing, thing, but we're going to provide a few, few bits of functionality that uh, a resizing array wouldn't have. And because this is you know, such a large array, um, rather than just iterating over the entries saying for i equals 0, i less than long max, i plus plus, you know, we, we, we might actually want a more efficient way of accessing it. So that, 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 that's why we have uh, special iterators, um, just so you don't have to count from, from, from 0 to 16 quintillion every time you want to find everything that's currently in the array. 
Um, so here it is. This, 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 this is the API that I ended up coming up with. Um, and I particularly want to single Dave Chinner out for helping out with this because um, he, he really, are you here, Dave? Okay, anyway, so Dave, um, I, 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 as, as I said, I, I went off and converted a whole bunch of code elsewhere in the kernel um, that, that wasn't my code. I, I just went off and said, well, you know, if, if, if I'm going to create this interface, I have to work not just, you know, on my own stuff. I can't just do one side of this interface. I've got to do the other side of it. I've got to go and write code which uses this interface. And I did. And he said, I can't believe you wrote code like that. Um, and uh, really, really, really helped me uh, bash the um, the the, the uh, interface into shape. And so everything you can see on this slide in yellow, and if anyone's uh, colorblind, I apologize for that. Uh, everything you see on yellow uh, changed since the original version of this. Um, so XA arrays did not exist. Um, XA arrays erases an entry from the array. Um, so it, it's, it's the exact equivalent of of calling XA store with null as the third argument. But this is such a common thing to want to do, it really warrants having its own function. And so it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's no overhead. It's, it's, it's just a static inline function. The compiler replaces all that for you. But it, it, it just helps you. Um, it helps the person write code. And that's, and that's what I'm all about. Um, XA insert has the insert uh, behavior that people are expecting from the Radix tree. It will return E exist if there is already something there, because that's actually a fairly common thing to want to do. I thought that XA compare exchange was the right thing to do. That was actually called XA replace originally. And then I, I went and presented it to a bunch of people at a conference, and they said, You just described it as having compare exchange functionality. Why don't you call the function XA compare exchange? Oh, yeah, OK. Um, so, you know, it, it really helps to get feedback on early and often. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it turns out, so XA compare exchange is better. Unarguably, it's, it is better than XA insert because it tells you here is the value that was in the array before it. And so the, my, 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 my conceit, the way I thought you would do it, is you'd, you, you, you would pass null as the old entry and um, you, 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 the data that you want to be there. And, and, and if there was something there, it would say, well, the compare and exchange failed, and here is the value that it failed against. So you get back strictly more information. You don't just get back, eh, there was something there. You, you, you get to know what was there. And that's actually really helpful and really useful for a bunch of users, which would, uh, in, in, in the old Radix tree uh, code, um, they get back in the exist, and they go off and do a lookup to find out what was there. So the, 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 there's a lot of code out there that really wants to know. But there's some users that don't need to know. All they need to know is, eh, there was something there. Um, just give up. And so uh, we now have XA insert as, 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 a, as a member of the API because it's something that, that people are used to and people actually do want to use. Um, so the, the, the tagging API here. One, one, one of the um, other major changes I did, uh, thanks to Dave Chinner, is um, what we have up here called XA extract. So in the Radix, the, what, what XA extract does is it's basically copy out of the X array. So it, it's, it's find all of the entries that match a certain filter and pull them out and, and, and put them into this normal array that you've passed in. Um, and th this used to be two different functions. It, it used, it, in, 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 in the Radix tree code, it's two different functions, and I didn't think any better of it. So when I did the X array code, I, I also made two functions. And David Chin said, look, I've, I've, got, I've got this special case where I, 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 I use a special value that is not a tag to mean get all the entries out. And then I have a version which has a, a, a tag which um, pulls out just the, uh, the tagged entries. So now the X-Array has this concept that, that was previously private to the XFS code, which um, is, is uh, I, I call it XA present. So you can have XA tag zero, XA tag one, or you can pass in XA present, and then you can, you'll pull out all of the, um, the, the present ones. I have some other interesting ideas for filters that we might add in future, like um, uh, not tagged. So you know, put, put, pull out everything that doesn't have tag zero. Um, but we don't have any users for those yet, so I'm not act adding functionality until we actually have users. I have a hard time keeping up with all the functionality the users actually want. 
Um, and so XA tag filter, the, 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 that, that, that last argument didn't just get added to that. I then went off and added it to um, XA find, XA find after, and XA for each. So now this is generic functionality, which is, you know, having, having seen it being really useful in one particular situation, I went off and added it all over the place. And uh, it actually cleaned up two or three other places as well. And that's one way you know you've made a really good decision in your API when you get to clean up all kinds of unrelated code, because it turned out this was something common that people actually wanted to do. And so here's an example. This is one of the, this is one of the first uh, pieces of code that I uh, converted that was not the um, that was not the page cache. Um, <clears throat> so um, th this illustrates a one, one of these awful uses of the preload API because we, we we start off up at the top saying, um, okay, so we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll preload some nodes, and then we'll take we'll take our own lock. And then we'll go off and do the insertion. Oh, wait, if there was an error, and you'll note this code doesn't check to see whether it was enomem. Um, it, it, it just assumes that if it got an error back, then it was um, the, uh, the, 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 then it was uh, e exist. Um, if we get e exist back, we'll free the page that we allocated, go off and do second lookups. We'll walk the tree again all the way from the top to find out what page we actually got. Um, and then you know, drop the lock and end up reload section. Well, here's the re-implementation. And this is why I thought XA compare exchange was a good idea, is um, we do one operation on the X-Array. We do the compare exchange. That's it. That's all that we need to do. There's no more, there's no more preload. There's no locking, because the locking is all taken care of for us. Um, and we've gone from nine lines of code down to five. Um, and I thought, this is great. This is, this is uh, definitely the, the way to go. And you know, th th this does work great, but it turns out people have a lot more patterns than just this one. Um, so I've, I've actually done two APIs for this. And one, 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 one of the criticisms uh, Dave Shinner had for me was that uh, I had uh, two APIs. Um, and that I was, I, I was far too uh, willing to drop into the advanced API, because obviously I'm quite familiar with the advanced API, I wrote it. But if I'm, uh, if I, if I'm converting somebody else's code and I'm asking them to learn two APIs, that's maybe a little unfair. And so I've, I've, I've tried to take that to heart, and uh, when I've been doing conversions, I've either used the, uh, I've, I've tried to use the normal API where possible, and only, ditched, uh, only dipped into the advanced API where it's uh, absolutely necessary. And so with, with, with the advanced API, um, you get a lot more information about exactly what's going on. You take care of your own locking because you're the advanced API. This is really supposed to be used by things like the page cache. It's supposed to be used where you're implementing a different data structure on top of the X-Array. And we've got three or four places in the kernel now which are actually doing that. I thought a great way to, um, uh, to, to illustrate how, how you use it is to say, well, actually, all of the normal API is, is implemented in terms of the advanced API. There, there's, there's, there's no additional secrets here. This is all, um, and if, if you want to know how to use the advanced API, you can go look at the implementation of the normal API and, and, and you'll see um, how it's done. So we start off at the top by declaring this thing called an XA state, and that goes on the stack. And this XA state is called XAS because I'm really imaginative with names, and actually it, it turns out to be a good thing not to be too imaginative with names, like keep, keep consistency. If you see um, you know, a, a, an XAS anywhere in, in the code, you know, anywhere in the code, it's an XA state. Um, it re really reduces your cognitive load when you're thinking about it, like, oh, I see an XAS, it's an XRA state. Um, so yeah, we, 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 when we're doing a compare exchange, we take the lock, we load the value that is there now. Um, if the current value matches the value that, that, that our caller is expecting, uh, then we do a store, and then we drop the lock. And then, hit, and, and then, some, and, and then we've got two lines which are basically magic. Um, XAS no man. So what happens is, if XAS so if, 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 you're, if you're trying to compare exchange against a null value, and as I said earlier, that's gonna be a fairly common kind of thing to do because you only want to uh, store something if there was nothing there um, at, at the time we, we called it. Um, 
if you're trying to do a store and you can't allocate enough memory to complete the store, then the, X the, the, then the XAS store function will, will set an error value in the XA state that says enoMem. And XAS no mem says, are we in an enoMem state? And if so, it will try to allocate memory. Um, you see, we're, we're, we're passing in we're, we're passing in GFP flags. And this is the only place in the whole function that actually uses those GFP flags. Nowhere else in the, um, no, no, nowhere else in the function you will, will, try, will, will allocate memory. I mean, that's, that's not true. XS store uh, will try to allocate memory, but it, it, it tries very, very lightly. It knows we're holding a lock because you have to be holding the XAS lock in order to call XAS store. Um, but um, it, 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 it really just says to the, um, to, the, to the memory allocator, if you have memory available right now, give it to me. Um, if, if not, that's fine. I've got a fallback path. I know what I'm doing. Um, and so, and it does know what it's doing. It's going to drop the lock, and then it's going to try and allocate memory again. And um, it, it, XS no mem actually only allocates a single node. And we, we may need to allocate multiple nodes. Um, could, could be like a dozen different nodes in order to uh, complete the store. But that's, that, that's, that's OK. Um, it, 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 will, it will always make forward progress every time through this loop. And I know it works because I have a, I have a user space test framework. And in my user space test framework, every attempt to, can you just allocate a little bit of memory for me, says, no, um, come back and try again when you drop the lock. Um, and then, so, so, so it, 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 in my tests, it goes around this loop multiple times in order to actually uh, do it. But of course, when, 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 when you're running this on a real kernel and, and, and your memory allocator has lots of memory available to it, everything's going to be fine, and the, you know, it will execute, execute this loop precisely once. And then down at the bottom, XAS result, uh, th this is a little helper function I have which looks in the XA state is, do, do we have an eno memory situation? If so, we'll return eno memory. Otherwise, return the value of um, uh, current. And um, that's, <clears throat> it, it, it's, it's just trying, trying, trying to reduce. There, there, there are uh, probably half a dozen functions inside my code which use um, um, which, 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 which operate in this kind of way, um, which are going to return an XAS result. And you know, it's just saving like three lines of boilerplate, but it's still saving three lines of boilerplate. And if I need to change it, I need to change it in one place. And it helps it fit on the slide. Does that make... Um, yeah, so I have, um, as far as I know, the, the X-ray is currently bug-free. Um, it, uh, it has a test suite. Um, it is, I have converted the Radix tree test suite over to use it, so it now has better test coverage than the Radix tree had. That doesn't mean it has fewer bugs, because um, the Radix tree has been around a while, and hopefully most of its bugs have been squashed. But um, we, um, we, 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 are, we are pretty close to, I think it's ready for inclusion. I just need to convince everybody else it's ready for inclusion. Um, I have a huge number of projects that, um, I, I want to, to take the, uh, radio, the, the, the X array and, and use. I don't have time to talk about any of them now. Um, I think I've learned some important lessons or lessons that I want to pass on. But uh, one of those is not time management. So I don't really have time to go into that. Um, I just want to thank you all for coming. And um, please stay around for Tobin's talk, because I think it's going to be really great and awesome. Thank you.